Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about a very important topic. So a serious topic that I think all of you should listen and pay attention to. So even though we're not going to the dyno, we're not going to the track, we're not installing new modification, we're not identifying any new modifications, I am going to use this point and review my experience with the Farable Stage 3 ECU tune. And it's not going to be specifically to the Farable Stage 3. I'm gonna focus on going through the K control values that I've experienced under various driving conditions. And those driving conditions are spirited driving on the street, taking it to the dyno to dyno test various modifications. What, what have I seen as far as K control numbers? On the street, zero to 60, from a dig, going through a couple gears, what have I seen? And then more recently on the track at Bandermere Speedway doing the quarter mile. That's a heavy load on the car. That is gonna be for, performed differently than running the car on the dyno in six gear for one long pull. So I'd like to go through that with you. I think it's important to identify what's a good control, K control number, what's a bad, what can you do to help improve those numbers and ultimately do you have a problem or not so if you're interested in learning more then stay tuned what i'd like to do is also talk about a belief here that I found in Denver with some tuners that I can get away with using an off the shelf 93 octane tune. Something to do with the fact that we're at high altitude, less oxygen. So you know what, I wanted to give it a try. And I know this doesn't apply to a lot of you because it's not just the difference between 93 and 91, it is also at high altitude. But I want to make sure that I put that out there because for some of you, you may be wondering, Chad, why the hell are you running a 93 octane tune when you only have access to 91 gas? So that's the reason. In the first scenario, our everyday driving and even some spirited street driving, it's been great. The two My K control numbers, 0 0.49, 0 0.50, 90% of the time. Strong pulls uphill, I can get it to 0.52. To me, 0.5s, nothing to worry about. I'm okay with that, especially considering pretty quickly afterwards, those will settle down. Scenario number two, on the dyno, in six gear, doing our dyno pulls. Same situation, no problems. Yes, pull after pull sometimes, they head up to 0.52, 0.54, nothing to be concerned about. They even drop after a pull. A pull. Uh, so in scenario number three, this is where things started getting interesting. This is where I'm on the street, zero to 60, you're from a standstill, going through a couple of gears, you're launching the car. The K control numbers started to rise. Every subsequent run, run goes up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, up to the point where I was hitting point, usually it's more point sixes, right? High point sixes. During one event, one outing, I did hit point seven. So that's getting me a little bit concerned. I only say a little bit because I'm not doing that all the time, but from zero to 60 to hit point seven, I didn't like that. That's me personally. I'm not saying, hey, you hit 0.7, you're gonna damage your car. I Let some of the experts comment below. I don't know, but I wouldn't consistently run a tune if I saw 0.7 or higher. I feel comfortable. I personally wanna see it in the 0.5s, 0.6s, okay, that's fine if it comes down after that. So that got me a little bit concerned. But even more so, when I go to scenario number four, Take it to the track, super excited, went to Bandemir Speedway, couldn't wait to see how the car performed. After the very first pull, and I ran, I think four or five pulls, needless to say, it kept going up drastically. 
the car, according to the data logs, looked fine until about 80 miles per hour. After 80 miles per hour on the quarter mile, it went crazy. It really did not like that higher speed. And I experienced K control values of just under one. So it was 0.8, point high, low 0.9s, mid 0.9s. That scared me. I called it quits, not gonna do this. You know, I, I don't wanna damage the engine. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, if you found a lot of value in the information contained in this video, please consider hitting that super thanks button at the bottom of the video. A lot of people have mentioned supplement with E. So with ethanol, use E85, put a gallon, gallon and a half in your tank and you should be good or at least better. Was that the scenario? So I tested that out. I put a gallon and a half of E85 in my tank, filled up the rest of the tank with 91 octane. So on the street, beautiful. As you could expect, it was fine. That tune was absolutely fine. The zero to 60 runs on the 93 tune with 91 gas supplemented with a gallon and a half of E85 ran much better. Where most of the runs, and I ran a whole bunch, back to back, so not even letting the car cool off. So it was getting hotter. It was getting up to the mid to high fives. But to me, it's a good 0 0.10 difference using the E85 and not using the 85. Okay, that sounds good. And I did test it a couple times. If you're saying, hey, Chad, just get off that tune. I did, I got off the tune. I switched to the 91 octane variable stage three, and I used 91 octane, and I did not use the E85. So it was a straight up tune. What was my experience with that? Oh, so much better. Taking the 91 octane tune to Bandemir, running the quarter mile was so much better. Yes, the K control numbers did increase and it still, for some reason, increases right at 80 miles per hour. There's something there. And when we go to a custom tune, I, tune I'd love to find out what happens at 80 that starts jumping my K control numbers. But instead of hitting numbers that were 0.7s, 0.8s, low 0.9s, scary numbers in my mind. It only went to 0 0.65, 0.66, 0.67. It was very slow, it didn't jump. And I ran and ran and ran, you know, back to back. It performed really well. Now, I have to say, after, I think on the fifth run at the track, it did go up to 0.7. So not perfect but certainly much better. If I were to stay on this tune, on the Faribault tune, and do a lot of track time, I would probably put some E85 to supplement. My guess is that I'll still stay in the, you know, being that I'm in the mid to high sixes and touching on 0.7, that it could easily put me in the low sixes and make me feel much comfortable. Lightweight rims, they're in the garage right now. High performance sticky tires, arriving any minute now, it's supposed to arrive today. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna see how much weight we're saving. If it's a ton, I may even dyno it. You have a lot of parasitic loss on a heavy tire rim combo. If you could save a lot of weight, you should theoretically see that on the dyno. We'll see what happens. So it's not just the traction at the track and be able to get that traction from a dig, but also the weight savings. Um, flex fuel. I already have the flex fuel kit sitting on my desk, staring at me every day. Uh, we'll get that installed. We'll test out the K tuner um, tune for E85, and then we will test out the Farable Stage 4, and we'll see how those compare. With that said, I think we're done for today. Thank you very much for joining, and until next time. <music>